let me ask, what's your view about whether these protests should be going ahead? We saw France, to give it context, effectively try to ban them. I think it was only a couple of days ago, I think that those bans were reversed, actually. I, I think in a French court, you may know more than me on that subject. We've seen protests everywhere. There's a huge strength of feeling, uh, obviously, that has been brought to light about Palestinian people. But of course, it is in the dreadful context of the attacks on October the 7th, and we are seeing some breaches of the law. Where do you stand on should these marches be able to go ahead or not? Well, I've all, I'm, I'm against banning anything, and I'm a, I'm a, um, a believer in uh, free speech to the, to the utmost. And so from that, on that level alone, I don't believe in banning protests. What I do uh, disagree with is two-tiered policing, and that's what we've seen in evidence last week. What do you mean by that? And we'll see in evidence this weekend. Two-tiered policing or selective policing is the decision of the police to treat one group who are protesting differently to other groups. And so, for example, last weekend, with 100,000 protesters, we only saw 10 arrests. Now, just contrast that with the 275 arrests that were made over the Notting Hill Carnival just two months ago. Or contrast that with the 150 arrests that were made during the lockdown protest in 2020, 2020 and a similar number, 150 or so, were arrested during a much smaller EDL protest a few years ago. And then, of course, we have the, the parallels with the Sarah Everard vigil in Clapham Common, a vigil for the poor Sarah Everard who was murdered by a policeman uh, in London. And it's, it's the inability of the police to uh, crack down on those people who we saw last weekend clearly engaged in acts of hate. That is the problem here, because it undermines trust in the police generally. I, I do, do agree with that. Could I, could, could I ask you a question, though? Um, I, I don't like cutting across, but I think you've made your point very well. But there is also, some people would say, well, hang on, if there were only 10 incidents uh, that warranted arrest, the police were right. Isn't half the problem here is we don't know how many people were breaking the law because the police were not. Uh, if you like, by their own admission, fully implementing the law. It's not a numbers oh, well, game. It's not a know. numbers game is what I'm saying. It, it, is, it is absolutely a numbers game. I mean, no, it's a numbers game because of the number of photographs that have been posted on Twitter and on which the police have latterly said, can you please help us uh, find these people? But you're quite right. I mean, so essentially there were many more than 10 uh, arrestable offences that were being committed. I mean, we also saw scenes of the police helping protesters down off of scaffolding, they had climbed up to fire flares. Now, in any other context, that wouldn't have been allowed. Uh, we saw people waving jihadi flags, uh, which weren't ISIS flags, but they were linked with terrorist organizations, which has been confirmed after the fact by, by lawyers. And yet there, is a there are a group of experts amongst the police who are choosing to interpret all of these actions in the most lenient way possible when we know, for example, that a man was arrested for um, making an anti-Bobby Charlton uh, remark recently. Uh, we know of, ch of people who've been arrested for showing pictures of, of young boys who have died, uh, who uh, another club was raising money for in a charity. So the decision to interpret some things with the full force of the law and some things most leniently uh, stinks to high heaven for those what people. What do you make of the uh, police claim uh, which we got uh, on this show uh, last week, uh, when I was interviewing uh, police about this, was that they believe that is the examination of evidence captured from those things that you've highlighted from Twitter, you know, which let's give it the benefit of a doubt and say it's authentic, because some isn't, as we know, but those images, those caught by the national press, those caught on TV cameras, and that they investigate and arrest after that so they do if you like desktop investigation because and the reason is they believe so sensitive is this issue so large-scale are the demonstrations it could make things turn violent well this is this is this is the, the crux of the issue I mean on the one hand we're told that this is a peaceful protest that the vast majority of those who are protesting have peaceful intentions and then at the same time we're told oh well it's too sensitive and, and we risk we risk having a riot if things get out of hand. So which of the two is it? I mean, I'm questioning why there are only 1,000 police who are present uh, at, the, at the, this protest 
the same number that there were last week. A far larger presence at Notting Hill Carnival. I mean, the Met Police are the best in the country at policing large-scale events. We just had the Queen's funeral and His Majesty's coronation. Yes, but policing. unlikely, unlikely to be, let's be honest, it's a, an odd comparison, that. Because no, it's not, not it's, comparison. Well, it's not going to be toxic, is it, the Queen's let funeral? Me, let me complete the finish the point. Only 1,000 officers when we have a 35,000 strong Met Police and the police are very regularly used to asking other, other forces to bring in help if they need it. Contrast how we've policed this with how the, the, the Dutch, the French and the Germans have policed their events. Uh, we've gone about this. Uh, the, the police well, in this country what have they done that we haven't? The police here are petrified by political correctness and that's the problem. I, you know, I understand people, that. Tracy, I understand that point. But Tracy me... Ann Oberman, who was a very well-known actress in this country, earlier today she reported a private conversation she had with a Met Police officer, and he confirmed what basically we've always assumed. He said, quote, there are simply too many haters in this protest for the police to rest on site. And let's be clear about it. The protest that we're seeing here in, in, uh, in Britain and in, around the world and in the Middle East aren't really pro-Palestine, they're anti-Israel, and they're anti-Semitic at its root. Now, I'm not saying everyone on those protests is anti-Semitic, far from it. A large number are genuinely concerned about the appalling plight of the people in Gaza, and my heart goes out to those poor people in, in Gaza uh, and the conditions they're in. But let's not be naive about the reality here. And there's a vast number of those protesting in London are not doing it out of love for, for Palestine. They're doing it out of hatred for Jews and Israelis. And I can say that because the evidence is clear We've seen over the last couple of weeks huge protests in the Middle East, in Baghdad and elsewhere, and around the West. But where were those same crowds when we had 12 million Muslim Uyghurs in China? When we have the Rohingya Muslims in Burma, who are called by the UN the world's most persecuted minority. Now, there are only 2 million Palestinians. There are 12 million Uyghurs. And where were these crowds when, when Assad was bombing his own people, the Syrian people? when the Iranian government was crushing brutally last year Iranian protests, or when Saudi Arabia was bombing Yemen and was accused of war crimes by the UN, and we saw the brutal murder of Muslim Rafe, children. Rafe, your, your, your examples, Rafe, there are, are absolutely legitimate, and you pose a very legitimate question on there. Can I just go back to something else you said, though, because I, I do think this will interest a lot of people listening, is you said the Dutch and the French, uh, the way they were policing, was better. Uh, I mean, we saw the French first try to ban the protests, but you and I agree that's not necessarily the route. Then they started using tear gas. Isn't that precisely what we don't want to see on the streets of London? It's not because you know policing has t two purposes. One of them is to actually reassure the rest of the public that the police is on their side. This is a critical factor which in this country we seem to have lost uh, an understanding of. And that's why trust in the police has become so low. We don't see the police turning up when your house is burgled. We don't see the police, we see the police arresting people for harmless activities that are quite innocent, such as retweeting a, a harmless limerick or we see the police failing to act when actually they should be acting. And it's the fact that the Jewish population of this city, London, and probably the whole country, now feel less safe on the street, that they cannot rely on the police as they once perhaps thought they could have done. And that's eroded trust with all of us. And I think that's the reason we need to see a strong police presence that ha carry, that, that polices without fear and or favour, and we're not seeing that. And do you think, just final question, do you think that you will see uh, by the end of today and tomorrow, images of clear breaking of the law where the police did nothing. I have absolutely no doubt. There is a, the modus operandi of the police for these types of protests compared to, say, lockdown or when other people do it, is to observe, record and try to chase up after the fact. And so instead, what we're going to see over the next couple of days is the police asking us to do their job for them by posting pictures on Twitter and, and asking and, for help. And what I would agree with you is... When we've all moved on to another subject, which I know sounds ruthless in the context of what we're talking about, how many of those prosecutions will actually be carried out? And I put it to you, Rafe, if you find out that it is a dismally pathetic number when all the evidence says otherwise, we'll be in touch with you to talk about that. Rafe uh, Hadel-Manku, Senior Fellow at the New Culture Forum, thanks very much indeed for joining us.